Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Bolt Action Reloading. In today's episode, we're going to be doing some testing with Vitavori's N560, as well as the 220 grain Sierra Match King. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of me here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you'll get notified when I post new videos and you won't miss anything. Guys, today's testing is again going to be primarily a pressure and velocity test with a new powder. We didn't really want to load up a whole bunch of these and find out that we were over pressure, less having to pull all of our bullets. So we're going to be testing to see what powder charge weights give us what velocities and ensure that the, these pressures are going to be safe in our rifle. The actual brass we're using today is Winchester brass. This has had multiple firings on it. We've actually annealed it, neck turned it, trimmed it to length, chamfered and deburred the cases, and primed it with these Fed 215 large rifle magnum primers. In today's test, we're going to be testing Vitavori's N560 along with the 220 grain Serum Match King. This is a combination we have not tested on the channel yet at all. So a velocity and pressure test is how I like to start things. I'm sure it's one of the most exciting things we cover here on the channel, but hopefully doing this testing will help us from having to load some projectiles that we'll end up having to pull later down the road. Our test platform for today's testing is our Thompson Center Compass chambered 300 Winchester Magnum. We've actually replaced its factory plastic stock with the Boyd's Pro Varmint laminated hardwood stock with adjustable comb height. We've added a 20 MOA EGW long action scope base. The scope we'll be testing today is our SWFA Fix 16 power scope, mil mil. It's currently wearing 30 millimeter Seekins Precision scope rings, as well as an SWFA bubble level. Our factory trigger has been upgraded with an M Carbo trigger spring kit, and we'll be reducing our recoil to a Precision Armament M4-72308 brake. So velocity testing is nothing new to the channel, but like I said earlier, our powder is. So our source for low data today is Sierra's new manual that was released on Android. And certainly why we decided to try out this powder is this is what Sierra lists as the accuracy load for this projectile, specifically this powder at max charge. So the max charge we're going to be loading up to today is 71.2 grains. We actually have 16 cases of Winchester brass. This has been annealed in our amp annealer. It's been full length size, neck turned, trimmed to length, as well as chamfered and deburred. Since we have 16 cases, we're going to be loading in 0.3 grain increments. We'll be starting at 66.7 grains of N560, loading all the way up to 71.2 grains. 20 thousandths off the lands has been a sweet spot for these 220 grain Sierra Match Kings. So we're actually be loading those to a CBTO of 2.897 inches, which is at the current time 20 thousandths off our lands which is going to give us a overall length right around 3.470 inches. These do fit in our magazine, but barely. If you haven't seen it previously, I'll put a card up and you can check it out. We did run the Tubbs final finish system through our rifle. I try to cover that entire process the best I could, but one of the side effects was it did actually push our lands out even further in our rifle. So at full magazine length is exactly where we're loading these. We're hoping they're going to function well, but most of all, we're actually hoping for good groups. 20 thousandths off the lands is where we saw accuracy with it before, and we hope that continues. Our primer for today is the Fed 215M Large Rifle Magnum Match Primer. And part number, if you hadn't covered it already, for the Sierra projectiles is 2240. I'm certain you guys are very excited to see how these go, so without further ado, let's head it out to the range and see how these shoot and see what velocity we can achieve, and then we'll come back and talk about our results. Unless you guys really wanted to see me shoot 16 separate times and not get any target footage, that is about the best that we're going to be able to do for today. Unfortunately, our target camera got rained out for the day. That's all the footage I would be able to provide. Nonetheless, what we're really here for is our pressure and velocity curves for the day. If you're interested in what those group size were, you'll see that if we actually omit those two shots, our group size would have been 1.859 MOA. Those two shots, call them flyers if you want, 2.882 MOA is where we ended up. Certainly not our best accuracy for a velocity string that we've shot any time in the recent past. That aside, pressure and velocity is what we're really here to look at today. Let's get right on down to our pressure and velocity curve. If you remember when we started at 66.7 grains, our expected velocity was somewhere around 2600 feet per second. Our actual achieved velocity was 2577. And unlike most of our testing so far on our platform here was actually below our published data, whereas in most cases we've been significantly higher. Moving all the way up to 71.2 grains, our estimated velocity there would have been somewhere around 2,800 feet per second, and actually we only achieved 2,780 feet per second. At this point, we've been pretty much used to actually exceeding our expected velocity in our rifle, so today's results are a little unexpected from that aspect at least alone. 
Now it might have been nicer to actually test these in somewhere around 0.2 grain increments, but since 300 Winchester Magnum is a larger case, 0.3 is what we chose. We might find our graph lagging a little bit solely based on that information. Looking for velocity nodes here might not be quite as apparent as we might like. In several of our loaded notes, we've had our first two shots be somewhere very close to each other, which is the same case today. 2570 feet per second is really not the velocity we're hoping to shoot for here. So move up the chart here a little bit further. When we hit 2620 feet per second, two shots repeating there right at 2621 and 2623 around that 67.9 grain area. But again, not really an exciting velocity. And in case I failed to mention it before, this is the actual accuracy powder for this projectile that Sierra lists in their data. And they honestly list that accuracy right up at max load. 70.9 grains, 71.2 are not significantly off from each other, only eight feet per second. Might be interested to do some more velocity testing around there. That really might be what we end up doing if our pressure allows us to do so. So if pressure is what we're looking for, let's look at our cases. All the way at 71.2 grains, really nothing significant to see here. We have the same flattened primers we've had on a lot of our loads previously tested. No real ejector markets or anything to talk about as far as that is concerned. And nothing else really on the cases that get me excited. But as always, you guys can take a quick look, see for yourselves. Nothing that if I really felt it was worthwhile testing a little bit higher than this would certainly be something I wouldn't hesitate to do if accuracy was going to be able to be improved by bumping that up right on that max charge. Overall, I've really had high hopes for N560, and this might not be the last test we do with it for sure, but blame the brass in this case or whatever you want. You know, this Winchester brass has been through a few rounds, so this is certainly not our best lot of brass in our possession. Might be interested if we switch back to our ADG brass, see where our velocity ends up, see if we have better luck testing in it. As always, even if you're not loading for a 300 Winchester Magnum, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please post those in the comments section below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you get notified when I post next week's video. I hope to see you back next week, and until then, stay safe in small groups.